Good day, lords and ladies, and welcome to Kornis' first look video for Undeadly, a turn-based uh, zombie survival game developed by a single um, developer. Um, so this is going to be a, just a straight up not warning but advisement before going into this this game is still in in early access um and from what i've seen what i've read about it it's it's it still has a it still has a lot of development left to it i mean the core concept of the game is there and um developer is constantly and regularly uploading and working on it but they are from what i have read a lone developer so it's going to be one of these things where you're basically investing in this title and um, sort of ho hoping that it gets completed at this stage. I mean, the core concept and the premise of this game is really good. I'm just going to say this up front. It's a really good premise. Um, from what I've played, it's interesting. An interesting take on the XCOM sort of for format. Um, but... Once again, it is in early access. So please be aware of this before you dive in. I'll leave a link to um, the game, like to the Steam page for this game in the description below. And uh, let's dive in. First of all, let's look at the option menus. So you have game options. A lot of things are not sort of changeable at the moment because it's still in early access. So difficulty, all that kind of thing. You can expect gore and blood, intro sequence. So... Uh, Discord button, all that jazz. Um, there's advanced stuff like sewing AI event range and all this kind of jazz. Graphics, nice selection of things you can turn on and off. Controls can be recustomized. Some people have complained about uh, like key bindings because a lot of stuff is tied to the right mouse button for like using, moving, confirming actions. Um, doesn't really bother me that much myself. If as long as you're not careful and you're not, as long as you're careful and not rushing. Uh, accessibility, once again, it's in early access, so we, a lot of these things are, are limited at the moment because this is in early access, and this this title really deserves to, to be one of those that is called to be in early access. Like the core, as I said, the core mechanics of the game are there. Um, but there's still things like you can see language options have not been implemented. Um, difficulties have not been implemented. Like they they literally haven't even got, they've got one, I think it's got like one difficulty, maybe two. Um, you can't do a lot of the customizable stuff. Audio settings are good. So yeah. So what is Undeadly? Undeadly is a turn-based survival strategy game. Um, from what I can tell, multiple, if, it's not your standard zombie apocalypse game. It's more along the lines of something like, um, Stranger Things or, um, uh, there's a particular game came out recently, which is you basically drive a car through sort of like a sort of Twilight Zone event game. I don't know what it's called. Pacific Drive, I think it's called. Um where it's multiple realities have sort of crammed in on one place. For lack of better words, I think this game is set in a, a, a world where multiple realities have sort of crashed into our reality, and you have sort of rifts in reality and in space and weird things going on, and the world basically ended. And in the process of this, you have these, like, the dead have come back to life and there's all kinds of other stuff going on. I do hope that other things get added, like maybe other creatures and entities get added. Maybe different factions and monsters. Okay, but let's dive into the game. So first of all, you have the game modes. You have peaceful, take your time, explore the world at your own pace. I know zombies, reduced amount of hazards and rifts. We can't select that yet because it's in early access. Survival, which is the, day, the traditional, um, difficult, the diff, uh, traditional game mode, which is... Run, fight, run, survive. You can, can you survive under the survive, supply, scan to supplies, craft ammunition, navigate rifts, and fight zombies. Survival, survival position is key. Crafting and planning and strategy is a must. And then you have lock and loaded. Expect too many zombies to handle fight to the last moment, which is basically like 
wave hold wave mode then you've got customizable choose a custom settings to create exactly the style you desire you can upload the preset as a starting point and configuration we'll just go with survival for now as i said difficulties are not available yet really in early access we haven't got you can't have easy you can't have hard um so you only have normal difficulty plenty of zombies rifts enabled personally i would have said it's probably good to have early in early access to have easy um available um but i can see why normal would be the default because it's the thing you want people to play on and then hard is as you can expect increased zombie activity increased hazardous rifts nights are longer more unforgiving um so let's go with that then you can begin game mode normal and we have the tutorial turned on one thing i will say about this game the tutorial needs to be better um it's pretty bare bones at the moment yes it is early access but i find that a good tutorial even an early access goes a long way to getting people interested in the game because if you can get them hooked on your premise early they stay for longer So yeah, as you can see, everything's everything's gone out the window. Okay, undeadly quick tutorial. Direct a group of survivors in this turn-based strategy survivor game. Use the survivor ability, scavenge for resources, all the while nav navigating a warped reality strewn with inexplicable phenomenon. Come nightfall, the undead seek the living. First, let's go with some of the basics of undeadly. So yeah, it's your standard WSD keys for moving the camera. Q and E rotates the camera. Left mouse button is select and right mouse button is your action button. So you do it to confirm movement, you do it to attack objects and you do it to confirm the use of abilities and items. So be aware when you click the right mouse button and just be careful. Um, you can switch between controller and mouse and keyboard at any time. Okay, yeah. So let's click click our survivor um as you can see the survivor has see so here is have matthews um you have the health bar in the top left hand corner you have the action point in the top left hand corner like xcom they have free action points when you want to go somewhere you can hover over an area the different color bands blue red and green are the action cost to get to that area so we want to go to here we got to press the right mouse button and they will move there and see you here you have the action point system displayed it's your standard action system to attack an enemy it takes two action points to be aware of that so um, if you want to attack stuff you can't really move a lot in this game there are certain abilities that do bypass that though and certain quirks that you can pick up so let's go inside the house and there is a zombie Zombies are passive during the day unless provoked. Careful positioning is key to success. Rushing into an area can get you into trouble. Right, try and shoot the nearest zombie by moving the cursor over it and pressing right mouse. So, yeah. so you can just hover over it. Right mouse click. And you shoot it. When all survivors have depleted their action points, the survivor's turn ends. Every turn, time progresses forward just a little. Now that the top zombie's turn begins. So you can see day is moving up. So when health bar of a zombie is depleted, zombies go into a down state. While down, the zombies miss its turn and reawakens as a crawler. Crawlers move a short distance per turn and deal damage. Every survivor has a regular attack mode and a headshot mode. The zombies down with a regular attack will become a crawler. Headshot deals extra damage and prevents zombies from reawakening as crawlers. But the trade-off for this is regular attacks are a guaranteed hit, headshots are not guaranteed to hit. More factors go into chance to success of a headshot, but the main two are the weapon type and the distance. So, let's do, we can press 4, and we are going to activate headshot mode, and we are going to shoot the runner zombie, and blow his head clean off. Okay. On, on guard is a defensive melee stance that ends a survivor's turn. The chance of successful attack starts at 100% and decreases by 25% for every successive enemy. 
It is suitable when the melee attack is likely to deal enough damage to kill or down a zombie. If there are too many zombies, don't use on guard, reposition instead. Certain survivor's abilities improve on guard and make it more effective, yeah. So, as you can see here, we can turn that on. And it's currently up. And we finish them off. Survivor's abilities. Survivors have different abilities which def define their roles. Abilities are active or passive. Active abilities encourage actions like reloading or offering temporary charges like steady aim for better headshots. Click on the ability bar to use an active ability. Be mindful of the action point cost of using an ability as you can see there. Passive abilities often provide bonuses like increased movement, di movement distance or meeting prerequisites like engineering items at a workshop. Okay, so if we look at the character here, they have advanced healing, effectively heal heavy injuries, cheaper healing, healing patients cost with five fewer meds, and sacrifice 20 base health to gain an ability token. Okay. So, you can also use this to switch. You can use a uh, right and left arrow key to switch between characters. So here we have here we have Evans. They have project cost less. Workplaces cost twenty five percent less. Scrap workshop projects. Yeah, build tier two items at workshop and sacrifice health to gain an ability. So I think all characters have sacrifice base health, but these two are different. Okay, so let's go over here. Scavens. During the day, it's wise to scavenge for loot. Bring loot back to any facility and it will automatically be de de deposited in the base. Try taking the loot and bring it to the workshop, which is up here. So let's... You just hover over the item, a little cog will pop up and you press the scavenge button. And here we have a gas can. So let's take all items. We do have a weight limit. Uh, weight, as you can see here. The heavier we are, the more it will eventually close us down so let's take everything and let's move up to here and once you get into a workshop area all your lo loot is automatically deposited in the stores to resupply with you can also see uh how much what weapons we currently have equipped we've currently got a pistol with uh, 37 rounds uh it, uh 70, 45% Norse damage, the armor successful, yeah, armor damage, on armor damage you can see here how much, like, so it, uh, armor ignore 45% of damage, we uh, reduced armor condition, penetration of this weapon type, um, all very nice. So. You open up the workshop menu as always, you go and look for the cog, you press it to open. Facilities. Workshops is where the survivors with engineering abilities can craft items using scrap. Survivors can be healed in the med bay using medicine. medicine. The doctor will greatly increase the efficiency of a med bay. The armory stores all the equipment and art, ammo. Survivors deposit all carried loot upon walking into any facility. So, at the workshop we can craft ammunition. We can craft utilities, we can craft weapon crafting. So for example, if we click here, if we wanted to, if we had the right, we can craft uh, throwables, we have no trigger, we have a payload. Yeah, so we, we can't really craft anything right now. Um, yes, yeah, so we have the throwable mechanism. Yes, we don't have any trigger for it. Yeah, we need fuses. Emergency flare, Markov, Markov, cocktail. Okay. What do we? We could ask that. With a fuse. Hmm. We don't have any empty bottles. I don't know what it basically... This game's a lot about trying and expanding things. So let's go back. Wants to close there. So we could say craft ammunition. So pistol, regular. You have all the different different types. Do different benefits against different enemy types. Uh, 
no survivor holds required ending ability to, uh, for this crafting. Okay. So yeah. It adds crafting cost. This task requires extra scrap. Okay. So we could get into craft ammunition. And here you have weapon types. Use pistol. Use rifle ammo. You can see the different weapons with different damage types. There's different... All kinds of nice things. Probably getting a machete early on would be good, or a fire axe. Need to be level two. That's gonna cost a lot. Okay. Then you have stuff like blunts, all that kind of thing. Okay. As I said, this game is still in early access, so a lot of stuff is still locked. Not enough scrap. We've got 120 scrap. Yeah, advanced engineering. Okay. One action point remaining. And then you've got stuff like uh, crafting items. We can make a gas mask from toxic gases. Okay. So let's get that out of there. Let's move to here. Night is approaching. Okay. Use the ability bar to open the equipment and equip flares. So you can go here, change equipment. So basically, nothing got nothing's got equipped. So we can have something equipped if we want. This is currently what we have on our person. Select the flare. Let's flow, throw it there. To get it out into the open. Nightfall approaches. Unless disturbed, zombies are passive during the day. Come nightfall, the living or the undead seek for living. Be prepared, stay vigilant. As you can see, weird things are afoot. Rifts. Zombies are not the only thing to worry about. Surreal rifts are strewn across the land. These bizarre phenomena defy conventional understanding. Be careful, be mindful of your surroundings. You will be forever you will face the unknown. When you're ready, move both survivors into the highlighted area to end the tutorial. Okay. If we do that, that will end the tutorial. Um I am going to take this opportunity though to do a bit of looting. Because why not? So yeah. So he has movement points, so let's move. Let's move to here. So we got empty beer bottle. Uh, it's scrap value, so let's take items. We will start loading up on stuff we don't really need, but this is a survivor situation. So we've got bear trap, intermediate ammunition, M6 and M19. Okay, so you've got a rifle then. And as you can see, yes, one one complaint leveled about this game is that you do need to end you do end up having to even when you are in your home base, you do end up having to use like the action economy. So be aware of that. Okay, so this takes time to unlock. This continue needs to be scavenged. Uh it would take Two turns and zero action points in before this is ready to be looted. So let's scavenge that. So night time is quickly approaching. Okay. 
Okay, so we've opened it. What do we have? Rags. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, it's going to take one turn. Ooh, turns four. Okay, that's not great. Um, let's scavenge. It's going to take four turns to access plain. Yeah. Okay, so we can't skirt search these items. So the searching is ongoing still. So what do we have here? Uh, empty beer bottle, jar of honey, Stainless steel frying pan and frying pan. Okay. So let's loot everything and head back. Right. Deposit everything. As you can see, everything takes time in this game, so you have to plan accordingly. Yeah, fridge components. And we don't have the advanced skill to basically loop that. Okay. With the things we have looted, though, open the workshop. Right. I thought we'd have more stuff. Maybe because the game expects us not to have looted everything. But I'd like to have some more ammo, to be honest. Yeah, some basic non like regular core what's the difference hollow point is more against un unarmed opponents okay so it's better against let's just make some normal ammo confirm yeah how many turns would it take it takes six turns Completed inside. Let's make... I want to see how much that takes. Okay, so let's... Let's see, so she's working on that. Deployment... So that's so that's been lined up. Yeah. In progress. Okay, so you literally have to click on it and hit okay. Okay, nothing in there, so she can't do anything. I 
Okay, so that got made. How much ammo does he have for this? Okay, so we made... So where did the ammo go? Maybe it's just automatically pulled into the reserve. Looks like it. Okay. Right, don't have a survivor bay. Don't have... Okay, so these are the survivors that we had. Next survivor. Yeah, so it's not working because we're still in tutorial mode. Okay. Do active modifiers. Now you have the ability tree, which shows every character's abilities. You can also learn actions. See so for here, they have stuff unlock, cheaper heal. So you have basic tokens that you can invest in. Like I said, this game needs to be basically uh, explained more. The whole sort of character mechanic hasn't been really flushed out yet. So, you can go here and you see what it does. It gives us ability tokens gained. You can see where they go. This token ability is locked. Survivors is currently outside the library and cannot study or retain abilities. Studying this server is currently outside. Yeah, so basically, if you go to certain locations, you can... Uh, train and get more experience points which unlock more abilities but this game is still in really an early access so be aware of that okay so what's he, what does he currently have on her 37. Okay. No flares. Okay. Like what loot does she have on her? thing you can't actually see what from what I've been able to tell you can't see what loot they're actually carrying um it's not allowing us to do it okay
so the world's getting loaded in i will say i hope they add more sort of rpg elements to it like for example clothing backpacks uh ammo belts that kind of thing things that would like maybe allow you to carry more ammo um like more storage space like almost like project zomboid to be honest like the ground disappears from under us what if it does not stop the shadows whisper what do they say The world storm brews, watching, waiting. The dead rise, and we must survive. Undeadly. And here we are at the beginning of the game with our band of misfits. Direct group of survivors, yeah, in a turn based strategy game. Use firing ability scavenge from resources, all the while navigating a warped reality stream with an inexplicable phenomenon. Come nightfall, the undead will seek you out. The game mode is free place survival. Your object is to survive. Opt optional goals also provide example to push you in the right direction. Can you survive undeadly? I would recommend that you probably want to just try out the demo. Um, there is a demo on Steam. One second, folks. There is a demo on Steam. I would recommend that you all go and try that. I picked this game up at the time because it was discounted by 40%. And I wanted to support the developers. So, this is the world map. As you can see, there's a lot of... The world map's pretty big. I haven't really explored it um, fully. But you can, wherever you can sort of see, you can go. So we, if you want to, we need to basically find a base. There's a kitchen, desk. Workstation here is probably a good place to get into if we can figure out how to get around. So probably through this building. This way is blocked off. What are you looking at? You've got your standard zombie. Zombie. Okay. Chunky boy with 50 armor, which will absorb damage. Yeah, I think of it like temporary HP. Yeah. Nope. And that's, folks, is one of the things you have to be aware of in this game. Be really careful when you're pressing uh, the right mouse button. Okay. So we need to reload that. So what's her abilities? Uh, works up. Yeah, so she's basically an engineer. So her abilities, yeah. It also, we, it's going over the same information again. Movement distance. So she's basically a scavenger. Scavenger, but it's more like a pack mule. So you're basically a scout. You're a scavenger. You're a medic. You're an engineer. Okay. Okay, yeah, so for some reason a lot of stuff is locked in the tutorial, so we can't see what we're carrying, how much our ammo we have, so there's basically, yeah, ammo, super spade, spiked fuse, good thing there isn't, one thing I will say about this game that I do like is there isn't a uh, weapon de degradation or decay. Which is some survival games they tend to do that, and I'm not a fan. Um, but first things first, what do we have? We all have basically pistols, but we probably want to go 
this direction because this is where the workstation is and we can only get it for two ways this way or from the looks of it through this way both of them is going to take us a bit of a, a jaunt to go and get it but I'd rather go this way because we can loot this house as we're going through this one's a bigger house so yeah, let's go this way Shoot him a couple of times. Okay, yeah, headshots and crawlers, that's fine. We know how that works. Actually, yeah, that's fine. I think it's gonna re reactivate this turn. Okay. Let's set it let's set to the melee defense mode to see what happens. Time moves forward. That zombie's gonna be oh, that zombie's become active. Okay, because he spotted us. Not great. Let's finish it off. Save ammunition. The big guy coming is going to be a pain. But yeah, this is undeadly. Um, like I said, the game's in a pretty rough state. So uh, please be aware of that. It's definitely one of those games that you pick up and then... Uh, and then you have to think about. Um, I would really strongly recommend playing the demo of this game first before you do anything else. But if you want to invest in the game, it could be worth your time. Yeah, let's reload. Man, time's really moving on. Okay. But yeah, this is Undeadly. I know I haven't sold it very much. The tutorial... This is the thing with this game. This, this, the tutorial of this game needs to be worked on. But I like the base concept of it. If, you, if you've seen what you like, or if you've seen what I've seen of this game, um, I recommend it. I mean, think of it basically a, a sort of cross between Zomboid and XCOM is probably the best definition I can think of. Um... I do think they need to get the easy mode turned on. Um, I think one of my biggest gripes with this game is that the fact that you're going on into the game on normal mode is probably something that's a disservice to the game. Um, you need to have at least the ability to change the, 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 the length of the day-night cycle. Um, because... I think that's one of the key things that will put people off is that you don't know how, what you're doing it's easy to make mistakes and the mistakes cost you heavily because of how the turn system works so just be aware of that um, you can also do stuff like you can press one and switch between equipment people some people get a bit complaining about the options menu in this game they say it doesn't work as well and like the selection menu and the key bindings but remember this game is still in, in early access and it has a right to be in early access it's not it's nowhere near out of early access yet because it's only one bloke working on it but what i've seen i think undeadly has the chance to be a real sort of diamond in the rough um but i would recommend playing the demo and if you like it i will put a link in the description below um, to the Steam page for this and you can pick it up. Um, this has been Undeadly and I shall see you all again next time. Goodbye.